this, this giant 3D printer. It used to be over here. Oh, spoiler alert. <laughs> this is pretty cool. I made this. You should uh, subscribe if you want to see a video about that. Anyway, this printer was over here and I had a whole server rack over here. It was making a whole big mess. It was taking up the whole table. I need this table to work on stuff. So I decided that I was going to move all of my server equipment and all my home lab stuff somewhere else. You know this furniture over here? Like it's uh, like the square, it's the squares everybody has with these. I'll probably put a better picture of it, but whatever. Those, those things are everywhere. So I decided to make a home lab wrap that fits into one of the squares of that kind of furniture. So there's some reasonable parts. I think they're super useful. If you wanted to make something like this, you could totally just take the parts and print them. And otherwise, I'll show you how I kind of finagled the rest of it to cram everything all into a little square. There's even a cooling fan that automatically cools the system and keeps the temperature up to date and everything. Super cool. Let's get into it. So here's the 3D design that I came up with after, you know, lots of fiddling and doing research and stuff. Actually, let me show you the research first off. I came across two, really two major uh, inspirations, I guess you call it, right? The first one is this one. It's, it's very simple, but obviously it gets the job done. Um, one of the things that I liked about this is that it's all modular pieces and can be screwed together. And uh, I also like that there's these keystone jacks that are up at the top here, and those are like real easy to use. So I took a lot of that stuff and I, I built it into mine. Um, but really, this is the one I actually like fell in love with. It's, it's, it looks super cool. And, uh, you know, it's, it's small, compact. And the one thing that kind of stood out to me was that it's not your traditional rack, right? It's not everything going in this direction. And I know I'm going to have to do that because over here, none of this stuff is traditional like server rack stuff, right? I've got a NAS and a yeah, the switch, sure, but I got two NAS and a little mini server, and there's a there's the, the router, the wireless routers in the back, and there's a fan and all that stuff. This one seemed a little bit less conventional, but also it's not the right size, so I couldn't just like steal it and print it and, and be done with it. So obviously I needed to make my own thing. And since I have this furniture here that is, I think everybody's seen these, I think like even Ikea makes one, I think, uh, what's it called? The lac, lac table? These things are everywhere. I have two of them in my house. And it just seemed like the perfect space to put uh, to put like all my home lab stuff. So anyway, that's what I am to do. So let, let's go look at the, at the uh, CAD drawings here. All right, this is my like final product drawing. I put everything in here, every single component, every single panel, everything that had to be 3D printed, the fan, everything, it's, it's all in here. But I wanna start out because I'm not going to spend a lot of time on every single one of these pieces because some of them are going to be useless to anybody else that wants to use this thing. Um, we'll start by isolating just this outer frame, all right? So the frame, I think that this could be useful for other people. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to export this in different sizes, right? Because it's all little different reusable components. These are the two components. This is, this is everything you need to make this. The rest of it's all just repeats. Um, and I made it so this can be resized. So essentially like you can change the size of this square by printing different lengths of this middle, you know, this piece here and this piece here. And same thing with up here on this, uh, on this strut that runs to the back, you can make different lengths of this. So I'm going to make multiple different lengths and I'll put them all up online and put a link in my blog so you can download it. If you wanted to make something like this and you needed to fit it into something different. I actually don't know if this table is the same size as, as the Ikea one. I just know that I made this to fit exactly in the space that I needed and you should be able to do the same. So anyway, that's the frame. Um, it's got holes all around it, makes it real easy to mount stuff into. That's the, the best thing about it. Um, the screws are real easy to put in, uh, captured nuts here on, on this side, but otherwise, honestly, you can just use any kind of, any kind of nut and bolt to, uh, to you know, connect things to this. Now we start to get into like the actual, the actual pieces, the mounting pieces. And you know, this is, the mounting stuff is pretty custom, right? I mean, it's not like everyone's going to have the same switch and the same NAS and the same uh, peripherals and, and all that stuff. So I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on it. Uh, the network patch bay, I, I will share this, it's, it's super nice. And it allows you to take those little, 
uh, connectors. I'll find another video where I took a where I took a shot of it, but the little connectors, and you know, snap them into there, and then it makes it makes it so you can see all the different all the different patch cables. A nice, real easy one. I actually left a few of them empty there. I could put uh, network cables in there if I wanted to, or, or network ports, but I just didn't. There is the corner piece here for the for my little mini server. You can see here, it's just essentially lines up with the frame. I made a support for the bottom that runs across the, the bottom here, and this is for stuff to like sit on here. Um, I will share this one also, because obviously it's just kind of part of the frame. It just sits here, it doesn't even mount on it, just sits on top. Um, then we have my larger NAS. I made this little, made this little tray. It sits right on that back rail. It uh, connects here through these holes. Uh, then the other NAS, very similar. Um, the switch mount, this was interesting. The switch mount uh, has little pins on it so the switch can sit upright and slide on through its mounting holes in the back of it. Uh, there's a little bit of support here in the corners which makes it so it's a little more rigid. Honestly, it's, it's kind of flimsy, but the truth is, I mean, it never moves, right? You can see here, I, I, it's not going anywhere. It's perfectly fine that way. Okay, the fan mount, um, I made a little uh, exhaust fan thing on the back and I'll get into the exhaust fan part uh, in a little bit here because that's got a whole bunch of detail to it but a little exhaust fan port and then the router tray this is where my wireless router sits it's a Netgear Nighthawk mesh watt uh, router so it's pretty small and it just kind of sits there um, then the server patch um, this is the the patch bay for the USB and the HDMI um, which again is very it's the exact same thing as the network right the network has these has these snap in little little patch um, squares. I can't remember what they're called right now. And um, same thing with the HDMI and the USB. I bought those on Amazon. I'll put a link on uh, in the description and on my website for this. And then uh, just a very simple connector to go across the front. That that connector is just for extra stability and to make it so the whole thing doesn't kind of like wobble. And also to mount the front plate. So now we can go look at the front plate and I decided to get fancy with this. It's got, got a cool like pattern built into it uh, with just the, they, it looks like cubes. It's a bunch of, bunch of little uh, shapes that make it look like cubes. And, uh, and then I put some holes in the front here. Let me zoom in on that. These holes in the front are for ventilation. So the air can be pulled in through here across all the places that, that make heat. Now I also, that's all the plastic pieces, and that's super easy. Um, I assembled this entire thing, put it all together, screwed it all together, got all the keystone stuff snapped together and, and put together. Um, I had to make the keystone thing a couple times. And as a matter of fact, let me show you the waste, right? So here's my original my original uh, keystone patch bay that didn't quite fit. I just couldn't get the uh, get the inserts into here. So I had to make like very very tiny adjustments like half millimeter in order to get that to work i went through quite a different quite a few iterations of, of the frame uh this was way too loose uh these ones are okay i think what one of them was one of them was too long one of them was the right size but didn't quite have the right fit like this is it's okay um, this was I, <laughs> literally like just too tight of tolerances. I mess with the tolerances a lot on this. And if you print this and you decide to make one of these, the tolerances are very tight. So your printer really needs to be dialed in. Uh, this is something I was messing with the idea of like adding support across the center of it. I didn't end up using it. Um, here's my original um, network mount. And, oh, actually it goes like this. The original network mount. I did not make these pins sturdy enough and one of them snapped off. So I ended up having to super glue it and then I just didn't like it. So I started over again. And then uh, this front panel was just slightly the wrong size. So I had to, had to do that over again too. Anyway, printed all that stuff, got it all together. And then the final part was the, was the exhaust fan. I uh, ended up printing a little enclosure for uh, an ESP32 and making it USB powered so it plugs in plugs into here. Actually, let me see if I can get this, pull this out. It's kind of hard to pull out. You can see it right here, this blue thing. This blue thing is the, uh, is the mount for, that's holding the electronics for the fan. And then I bought a Noctua um, five volt pulse width modulation controlled fan. It's very important that you get the five volt one because that's how it runs on USB. And the PWM makes it so you can control the speed. 
And then I installed some software that I straight up uh, found on GitHub that was amazing for uh, controlling a fan with an ESP32 with ESP Home. And it, so there's a temperature sensor in there in the in the little blue box next to the next to the ESP32. So it detects the temperature inside the case and depending on the temperature, it adjusts the fan. It's not just on and off, it'll actually control the speed of the fan in order to try to get the temperature right. And I don't remember what it's called, I'll put a link in my um, on the website when I write the accompanying article to this. So anyway, that's the whole thing. I am super happy with it. Like this is space that was being wasted before by me just putting junk in this thing. Now my printer can go over there. I'm not sure the printer is going to live there forever, forever either. Um, I have this crazy idea of completely redoing this closet, which is a disaster with built-ins and then having the printer in there. We'll see if that actually happens. But yeah, that's the whole deal. Um, if you have any questions, leave a comment. And if you want the STL files for these, I will put links uh, in the description for how to get the STL files so you can print something like this. And uh, until next time, I hope I helped you learn something. Thanks.